Today on Adventures with Leo Shoemaker, we have Bo Besvina here talking about music. What else is there to talk about, right? Music! Because <laughs> we love music, we think music keeps us alive, it inspires us, and we hope that you enjoy this show, talking about his instruments, talking about his lessons that he gives out, and what we can all do to enjoy our own life. Take a lesson. Talk to Bo. Bo Besvina, guitar piano teacher in Bellingham, author of Culture Clock. Uh, you can go to flowmusiclessons.com. You're also a ukulele teacher. Uh, you're starting a group of ukulele players Sundays at the Firehouse over here in Bellingham, right? Yeah, it starts this Sunday at uh, 10 a.m. at the Firehouse. It's a ukulele class. I, I did one for free at the library uh, a couple months ago, and it, it filled up real quick. Good. And so I thought, why not try it again? And um, I've got about I think seven or eight people have registered so far for the class and, and hoping some more will, will show up. And if you can't make the first day, um, it's going to be every Sunday in March, 10 a.m. at the fire, Firehouse. And you'll find it on flowmusiclessons.com. Flowmusiclessons.com is the place to go to. Now, there are many reasons people want to learn to play a musical instrument. What are some of them? Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, I mean, the first one is emotional expression, right? Being able to... I, I think, you know, giving, giving a sound to our feelings, I think about painting as giving color to our feelings and, and, and you know, with sound there's so much you can communicate that um, you just can't sometimes get across with words, so that's a big one. Um, I think another one is it's a place where we can um, create and uh, feel empowered. And, um, you know, when I started this business, I was actually thinking about uh, when I had started playing guitar as a teenager and how um, I was not in a very great spot. I had a lot of big feelings, a lot of big losses in my family. And um, music and, and the guitar in particular was a place where I could go and create and feel like I, I uh, had some, I felt empowered. Like I could, you know, really do something about my life. and. Um, and, it, and I was competent at it pretty quickly. I was able to do it. It felt like, you know, it was a confidence builder for me. You know, and so, and, that, and that's, and I think anybody can learn music. And I think that um, when I see somebody get something and they smile um, and they feel like, you know, accomplished, that, that brings me a lot of joy. Did anybody in your family play music? Oh, yeah. I've got a whole line on my dad's side of the family uh, that, you know, uh, all like bluegrass and blues, fiddle players, guitar players, and not really anybody on my mom's side. Oddly enough though, my nephew on my mom's side, he plays piano great, and it was like, where did you get that gene, you know? So, mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. Well, I think that families do influence people a lot to go out and play music, to learn how to play music, and they pass the chords along to people, to their family members, which I think is great. And there's a study about dementia that if you have music in your life, it'll wake you up more or keep you going without fading off. And I think it's an important study, and I think you're doing a good job of doing that. Do you find a lot of older people come over to your lessons? Yeah, yeah, I definitely have, have some older folks coming in, and they have said that exact thing. You know, I, I want to make sure, I want to I wanna ward off uh, uh, dementia for a little while. And so that's part of what they're thinking, and, mm -hmm. and they want to have fun. You know, so. Oh, yeah, fun. And it's, it's an important part. You become part of the community. You become, part, you become a musician. You can go every place you go. You go to a fire pit and bring a guitar or ukulele, and you can play with everybody. And the most important thing, I think, and you probably agree with this, is if you play with other people, you get better. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely it. I, you know, uh, every time I play with other people, I learn and I think about what I can do differently and how I can improve and it's a lifelong journey, you know. Do you remember your first chords on the guitar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, G, C, and D. I hear a lot about G is really hard, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. What was the hardest was, uh, I don't know if it was G, F was kind of harder for me, I think. Was it? Yeah. You gotta get your fingers all in a different spot. Yeah. We're talking to Bo Bespina about his music, his life and how he wants to inspire you to go out there and enjoy yourself, to have fun, to meet new people, which is important, right? Absolutely. And you have people you can hang out with, take your guitar over to their house, say, let's play some music. And, and there's a lot of things uh, that are important about music. 
How many instruments do you have, uh, like guitars? How many guitars do you have? Oh boy, if we were just to talk about guitars. <laughs> uh, back here I've got three, acoustic, uh -huh. electric, and a bass, uh -huh. five string, you can't see them, but right here I've got my number four. I've got a few in the closet. I've got a couple in the closet. Oh, hey, do you really? <laughs> I've got, um, this what is, is that? This is a bazooki. And I've never uh, seen a bazooki before. It's out of tune a little bit, but it's basically a, um, it's like a, it's like a Turkish instrument. It's also well known in like Irish Celtic music. It's, um, it's a lot like a mandolin, but with a long neck. It's a beautiful design on the front and the back. Is, what kind of wood is that? I don't know what kind of wood that is, Leo, but Beautiful. yeah, I'll show you the design. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bo, you got some nice stuff here, and you also have a cigar box guitar. We were talking about that. I got that, yeah. Yeah, they're important because that's what they used to make uh, guitars out of in the South. They, they first start with a diddly bow where they put a string on a, on a broomstick or on the side of a house. Huh. And then they would use cigar boxes because that's all they had for a body to, for resonation. Uh -huh. and, and you have a four string cigar box, so it's like a ukulele, right? Yeah. Yeah, in that sense, I, and I think I, I tuned it kind of open tuning, I guess I can grab it. Um, it's kind of an open tuning, uh, but yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that, that they were doing these early on out of necessity. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that um, the guy who made it uh, from Chico, he used a screw as the nut Oh, look at that. There. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You got to use what you got, right? Yeah, use what you got. Yeah. There's a great movie called It Might Get Loud. Have you seen it yet? I've seen some clips from it. Yeah, Jimmy Page, yeah. Um, uh, Jack, Jack White. White and the very opening scene, Jack White gets a piece of two by four, strings, string it with one nail, string with another nail, and they put the pickup and plugs it in. And he <laughs> plays it. It's just wild to listen to. And the cigar box guitars are that way. They sound different. Uh, people manufacture their own guitar. Sometimes, if you're left-handed, you can't find a guitar that's left-handed. So you make right. your own, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I like the one from Chico. What's his name? Oh, you know, I wish I wish you, I would have known before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe we can find that. But yeah, I, I, actually, it's in Paradise, uh, where he's from. So oh, I've been a big fire. Yeah. They had a big fire, and I hope his house was okay. But yeah, I, I think uh, if you Google uh, cigar box guitars, Paradise, California, you might find them. And he probably grabbed all his guitars when the fire was hitting and ran outside. <laughs> right, right. There's a guy down south, uh, C.D. Woodbury, that he got in a car wreck a couple months ago. And he, all his guitars were in the car, and the first thing he said after they pulled them out of the car, get my guitars. And the fireman <laughs> did pull them out. <laughs> and I go, that's what you got you to think of what's important, right? Right. So, now, how do you teach someone that's just starting out how to play a guitar or a ukulele? Is there a chord? Is yeah. there a method? Well, let's, I mean, since I'm teaching the ukulele class, we'll talk a little bit about ukulele first. You know, a lot of people, they start with the ukulele, well, they choose ukulele instead of guitar because um, it's a little simpler. There's four strings and the strings are nylon, so it might hurt a little bit less. It's oh. going to hurt no matter what, you know, because you're going to be developing those calluses, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so it's going to take a little bit, but ukulele, it's a little bit less. On the ukulele, we have the lovely one fretted note C chord here. I know that one. You know that one? <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, <laughs> right, and so everybody seems, yeah, that's just like the very first chord, you know, and, and then you just work on, can you strum it? And then can you strum it with your finger? And then can you strum down, up, and down, up? And then maybe F. And then maybe G7. That G7C thing right there is beautiful because the G7 just goes right on to the C like a, like a, uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy. Sure. Like a path. Yeah, okay. yeah, like the trail down the mountain. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I always hear that the first song you should learn to tune your ukulele is My Dog Has Fleas. Have you heard that? My Dog Has Fleas. fleas. Well, there is not an M note in music. <laughs> so how, well, how do you tune uh, your guitar? Good, uh, How is that? uh, what is it? Good cats eat ants. Oh, I didn't know that one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's I mean, yeah, I don't know why, I just is Play it for us, just so you can see, people G, see it. G, C, E, A, 
Good cats eat ants. I'll be darned. There you go. So you were mentioning nylon strings compared yep. to steel strings. Yeah. I never didn't know the uh, difference. What is the difference? Is it really you have to be stronger fingers? You have to have yeah, yeah. It's going to hurt a little bit more with those steel strings. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the nylon strings are not only on a ukulele, but those are what are on a classical guitar too. And so you, if you're starting a guitar, maybe you want to try a classical guitar. That's what I started when I was a teenager. Good TV. one. I like that yeah. one. I never thought about that. Yeah. Are they more expensive? Um. It sort of depends, but you might be able to find a, a cheap one for a hundred bucks. Okay, you know, good. That, that's probably, yeah, where I would start. Good. Yeah. We're talking to Bob Esfino about his music, how he teaches people how to play in a way that makes it easier for them, which is, some people have it, some people don't. Do you have students that never get it? Or do you make them push on and get it? That's an interesting, you know, uh, there are so many different types of students out there, and I have not seen a student with a desire um, who couldn't get something. If they had a desire to get it, I have never seen them not be able to get it. And be stubborn. Yeah, be stubborn <laughs> about it, right? And practice. That's a first, my daughter learned to play clarinet in fourth grade, and she came home and said she's going to take it up. I told her, you got to practice every day. Yeah. And she did, and she was great. Cool. So, Linda, good on you. <laughs> do you practice every day yourself, even though you give lessons, do you play every day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I play every day. Um, I mostly, uh, I mostly, my routine mostly looks like piano and guitar. And the piano is, is because I'd always been a, a songwriter, um, first and foremost, and I was always able to, you know, write uh, songs and play in rock bands and all that, mm -hmm. and that was kind of my thing. And I, I gained this appreciation for music theory and for reading music. And so I've kept up with that by reading, by sitting down on the piano about a half hour a day. Mm -hmm. And then on the guitar, I kind of run scales for like 10 minutes a day. That's about what I, about 40 minutes a day is about what I practice, yeah. Now, music is language, mm -hmm. it's math, it's a whole other world. What is music theory? <laughs> Music theory, I think, is a way to eloquently explain a lot of things that just come to us. You know, um, when you listen to, I was, I was listening to a, a lesson on the Beatles and how um, on, um, I think it was Let It Be, this, the intro guitar solo, lands on, part, parts of the solo land on notes that are within the chord. So what I mean by that is like, if I'm on a G chord, that solo might go and land, right when it lands, it might land right when that G chord is in my solo, it might land right on that C. Now, when George Harrison wrote that solo, from what I was learning, he probably wasn't thinking that. He wasn't okay. thinking, I'm going to play a solo that the note lands right on one of the chord tones of the solo perfectly, mm -hmm. because that just, I don't even think he knew much about music theory. Music theory explains how people, it's sort of like putting a consciousness to what is otherwise kind of just more intuitive. And so it's just a helpful, kind of a helpful aid. And, and again, as a songwriter, when I learned, started learning theory, I go, oh, that's why I love doing that so much. That's why I love, you know. Something like that. I mean, that's actually really simple. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a lot of things like more complicated that I'm doing that I'm just learning. And it's kind of like um, learning a language that was kind of already downloaded in you. Oh, that's interesting. So it's from your DNA. Everybody yeah. makes music back in the old ancient days because yeah. that's how they communicated. Exactly. So is music theory a ongoing process for you? Do you have yeah. to learn it all the rest of your life and never get it all? Well, yeah. You never okay. get it all. You never well, get it all. Didn't know that. You can okay. stop any time. You can yeah. stop learning at any time and it's okay. If somebody once said, learn theory for a year and leave it alone, mm -hmm. I like to learn it as I go. Okay. I think um, as another thing about my lessons is that like, if I was, if somebody came to me when I was 15 and said, okay, here's all the scales, here's all the modes, 
here's all the mechanics of music, I would have been overwhelmed and exhausted. Probably given it up. Probably would have given it up. Hmm. But, okay. be, but having a little bit of that license to just create, a lot of that license to create, it gave me such an emotional connection with music that later on my own I started seeking out how does this work? I started asking questions about something that was fascinating to me. And, and so with, with students, I do try to teach a little bit as we go, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of, by their body language, I can kind of hear them hit the pause button. Really? You know, like, no, oh. let's take a break on that, and then we'll go back to playing a song. Uh -huh. So that's kind of fun. That's great. We're, we're talking to Bo Vesvina here in his house with his music, music room, lucky for you. That's I'm a great pretty thing. Lucky. Pretty great lucky. piano. Uh, you got instruments that I've never heard of. Bazooki, Bazooki. that's right. But you've got one back here oh, that yeah. I find interesting as all heck. And I really want to know more about this because it's from Africa, correct? Correct. This is a kalimba and it is also known as a thumb piano. Um, this was made by Thumb Fun Kalimbas in um, Grant's Pass. I don't think he's still running his business but he'd get these gourds and dry them out for a year and then um, he actually put a pickup on it. Oh, look at that. It's got a pickup so wow. you can plug it in. Oh. Then he put the top on it uh -huh. afterwards with co. This one's co wood. Uh -huh. and, he, and he'd stencil this, stencil this cool tree in the top there. Mm -hmm. And then what we have is um, the bottom row and the top row. I kind of put it between. I don't know if you can kind of see. I'll just do it like this. But. And so we have that scale goes up, right, left, right, left. Oh, it does. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Excellent. Yeah. That sounds really good. telling you all about the instruments he has in his room and what do you teach who do you well if you have another one respect, more I just one wanted, more. Well, I wanted to put a plug in for this one this is um Jason Love Goodman donated this to uh, to me as part of a program that I'm running um, for the juvenile correction center uh, in Whatcom County um, I bring instruments in there and uh, and I, I reached out to him, actually he reached out to me, he found out about me through a, through a music shop in town and, uh, and he made this and another one uh, for the kids there and so um, yeah I just wanted to say thank you again Jason and this one's a little bit different, the tines are really close together but it's, brighter, huh? it's a little bit brighter but it's nice Now you're talking about the program you have for the detention center. Mm -hmm. How do they feel when you first come in, the, the people in, in the detention center, and do they get it? Do they work on it? Does it help them? Oh yeah, well I didn't know how they were going to feel when I started this program about how it was going to be received, but um, you, know, the, uh, you know when I come the guards always say, hey the kids have been waiting for you. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And then when you walk in, you have all these instruments. What instruments do you bring in? Well, I brought a lot of them home to showcase for this interview, but um, what stays there is uh, about four drums, uh, djembe drums, some percussion, and a couple of ukuleles. Okay. And that all stays there, so I don't have to lug it in sure. every that's time I go. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Now, if somebody wanted to give instruments to this program, where would they go to? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, they would go to flowmusiclessons.com. Uh, There's a contact form there, and they would just uh, fill out the form and say, hey, I've got this and this I'd like to donate, and, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So what do you need? Right now, um, That's a good question, because we've got, I just, I just recently got, you know, I could probably use another djembe, um, djembe drum. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Bo Bespina's here. Get the drummer some, as James Brown used to say. <laughs> What's that? James Brown. Oh, yeah. Get the drummer some. 
<laughs> you gotta listen to that movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so this guy is really nice, but uh, yeah, so this is a djembe. Pick it up here. Wow, it's beautifully carved in the bottom. Beautifully carved, and somebody, yeah, they donated this, and um, and yeah. So what the the so when I first came in, I was just bringing guitars, right? Mm -hmm. And you get one kid there who just knew how to play guitar, and everybody was like. You know, a little bit taken aback yeah, by him it. Up, then. <laughs> that put him up, and it and it, it, it made such a it set such a precedent, mm -hmm. and I think it made some of the kids back away, and so um, you know my goal is inclusiveness, right? And so um, bringing these drums, it just lowers that barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. Everybody can play, right? If we all have drums, usually you know anybody will hop on a drum and, and don't and not feel quite as self conscious compared to a guitar. Because we all have a beat. We all have to beat. Within, you know? within yeah, right. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Even, even the heartbeat or something fast. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a great story. Johnny Cash was going to Folsom Prison to make an album, Folsom Prison Blues. And before he got there, Merle Haggard, who was in jail, sent him a letter saying, I wrote some songs. Here they are. Would you maybe play them? So Johnny Cash had Merle Haggard sit in front, brought Merle up to sing the songs. And that inspired Merle to go, I'm going to be a musician. I'm going to stay out of trouble. No way. Yeah, that, isn't that a great, great story? So you're inspiring kids to get out of this rhythm, this, this area that they're in right now, mm -hmm. and maybe direct them somewhere else to meet up with a different class of people, maybe a different kind of people, mm -hmm. people who are talented. Now, do the kids ever tell you that? Do they say, I feel empowered, I feel like I can play music? They show me. You know, they're never going to, I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll say little things like, I can do it. I can, wow, I can do it. They'll say that, mm -hmm. but really they show me they, with their enthusiasm and when they get on the drum or the ukulele and they say, hey, I've been working on something, check it out, and they'll play it for me. Wow. Um, and so, Does yeah. Does that give you a chill? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah That's great, Bob. I'm so glad that you're doing this. Now, what is the method you use for people to follow that allows them to move forward? Do you have a method? Is there a, something in your head? You know, I've talked to a couple people about this, um, and with the with the drum circles, you know, a lot of it is um, playing rhythm games, like um, maybe it'll just be something as a call and response. I do something on the drum, and then the whole group will respond to me, mm -hmm. and then somebody else will do something. Mm -hmm. But I give them uh, some limits. So like maybe they have to do it in two beats. Ba 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 da ba da ba 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 ba. You know they might do some solo within just those two. Ba 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 ba, and then go on to somebody else, and somebody might just go ba, <laughs> and they might just hit it once because they're nervous to do something, right? And that's fine. We move on. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it's creating a little bit of structure for them to be creative within, mm -hmm. and then. Um, and then yeah, I've also got some ensembles that I learned when I was a uh, like at a at a public school teaching music, where it's kind of everybody's got a part, and I and I'll kind of teach that too. But I'm always feeling out the group and what what was working with the group mm -hmm. or the individual student, right? It's like, you know, I might have an individual student, I might have a song I want to teach them, but they're playing something they heard in their head, say on the piano, um, and they're just enamored by it. So let's go that way. Let's go that direction and see. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, you know, listening to what the student needs. Yeah. Do people write original music when you're with them? When you're when they're inspired by you? Do you ever hear anybody? Look, this is what I just wrote. Does that happen? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. And like in the in the juvenile detention center, yeah. I did a uh, like a kind of a writing workshop where we talked about metaphors and feelings and like. You know, uh, you know, um, I could say uh, I'm angry, or I'm I'm angry as as a broken stick, you know, and, and that's a line, right? And so you can <laughs> you can, and, and so when I would teach them that, I, I do remember there was a couple who wrote some some really pretty cool lyrics, and um, yeah, and they and you know they might show them to me, or they might not. I mean, they might have me read them, or they might actually rap them. A lot of them like like rap and hip hop, but. Mm -hmm. But as far as my own students, I'm still getting there. I'm, I'm waiting for the day when somebody says, I wrote, you know, I wrote something. I really want you to hear it, you know. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Give the chicken skin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're talking to Boba Speed Up. Flowmusiclessons.com is where you can go for more information. We're talking about his instruments, his inspiration, who he inspires. Now, that's important. What made you think, I'm going to be a teacher? 
Huh. Uh, yeah. So I had a opportunity to go to graduate school years ago uh, in cultural anthropology, not in music. And I didn't know if I wanted to go on. I had a bachelor's degree in cultural anthropology. I didn't know if I wanted to go on or not. Um, but somebody, one professor said, well, try it out. Uh, maybe this is a good path for you. And, and so I uh, went, got to Oregon State University, and as part of, um, part of the, uh, the whole package deal is you have to teach. So if you're going to go to graduate school, you have to have a teaching assistantship in which you're teaching from their materials and their curriculum and all that, but you got to teach, and that helps uh, you know, the financial costs go down. But it's just part of the deal. It throws you in the breach. Just throws you right in. I want to be a professional. I have to teach. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. I love that. Now, in Bellingham, Washington, or around this area, do you go to schools and teach? So, um, I was teaching in the public schools, and then I am not teaching like as a full-time teacher in the public schools. I decided I wanted to kind of have a little bit more flexibility in my instruction, mm -hmm. and, um, and now I teach private lessons. Uh, there's been some offers to come and teach uh, like drum circles and stuff like that at the, at the local schools, and I'm still thinking about that. Well, I'm originally from Santa Barbara, California. Every Sunday there was a drum circle hmm. on the beach, close to the beach rather, nice big area, 40 or 50 people would come over. And then more people would come in, other people would leave, more people would come in. Ah. It was really exciting. We'd go there every Sunday and get a couple lawn chairs and listen. Huh. Uh, can that be? Can that happen here, you think? I think that would be really cool. Like over at Boulevard Just Park? Just right down at the park, yeah. yeah the park, right yeah, down the, the stage hill. there and everything. Yeah. Wow. You know, we, we enjoy music. I was talking to Will before. He hears music all day long, as I do. You hear a song in your head, I don't want it to go away, I want it to stay there, I want it to have fun. Uh, what do they, they call me? You have a song in your head all the time. Earworm. Yeah, okay. right. I like them. <laughs> I just do. Now, you have any others which you can present? Oh, gosh. You have the little drums there. What do you call those? Drums. These are, well, this one I think is a form of a, well, I think that's a conga. But this is another djembe I wanted to show that's kind of cool. It's a short, it's a short one. But it, it looks very, uh, very handmade. Look at the inside of that. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of raw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not in a conveyor belt. Maybe it'll give it more tunes or a different kind of sound. Yeah. Yeah. It's good fun. Oh yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. So when you aren't getting lessons, you all just come in the room yourself and just sit here and play anyway. Well, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> now you have a nice mic over here. Is that a blue? Uh, this it? is a AKG. Uh, it's a condenser microphone. Uh, you can Do you podcast some of your lessons? Uh, Do you go online? No, what I have is um, if you go to um, uh, Bo Best Vina Music on YouTube, Bo I've, Best Vina Music. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch on of videos, YouTube. guitar videos. Mm -hmm. um, that are starting to do pretty well. Good. I'm not getting money yet from it, but you know I'm getting lots of views and I'm having fun making them. And so mm -hmm. I use that mic to um, to to give the instruction because it's super duper clear. Um, uh, and sometimes I don't want to do all that, mm -hmm. and I just I just use my phone. And I just you know isn't that something? You know, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people thing. use use the phones for YouTube on YouTube. Yep. it's wonderful and TikTok and all that stuff. Yep. do you use TikTok? It's tough because my nephew, he's a big time influencer on social media and he does music and gaming and stuff and you got to get on TikTok, you got to get on TikTok and I just, I get on there and I'm just like, these three second videos over and over and over and it's, have you ever, it's just, uh, no, no, I, you're not missing, music, no, no, if they had a music did, TikTok, did, did they, they call had, it, do they call it, uh, you have a certain section you go to like, uh, cars or, or, uh, views of this and well, that. It's got an algorithm. So yes, if you you know you could watch just the music videos and it will it will the com the algorithm will say oh he likes music mm -hmm. lessons so we'll get, you know music videos so we'll give him more of that but they'll throw in other stuff and you know I don't know we'll see. So your nephew's name what is it, what is his name Christian and where does he say to go Does he say Facebook at all Does he say uh, Instagram or are those passe. 
No, he says he says uh, not fa Facebook's out, Instagram's okay. in, TikTok, Instagram, and oh man, I know he's got some others. But. Well, Instagram is so unusual because it's only thirty seconds of a video you can present. You can't present more than thirty seconds, from what I remember. Well, there's a reel, and then there's a. But uh -huh. yeah, you might be right. You yeah. might you might know more than I do about this. Huh? You learn. <laughs> you push a button. If that doesn't work, you go back and push another button. Right? <laughs> you know, it's easy to learn how to use. Uh, social media if you work at it, but is it easy to learn music? Well, you've got to work at it, right? right. Got to work hard every day. Do your students come in here and say, I've been working on it, I've been working on it, or do, can you tell right away when they haven't been? Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> you know, yeah, sometimes they come in and go, I haven't worked on it at all. And they go, it's fine. Let's see what we can do today. Let's, Good. let's figure out something. You're here now. Yeah. So, uh, so let's dive in. And, you know, I, I, because I have adult students, some of them, they just, just work gets in the way, you know, they get so busy and tired. And, and, you know, so part of my job is not just a music teacher, but a coach. Oh, I like that. Right? Okay, coach. And so, and so, you know, there, we all have, we all have hurdles. We all have barriers. Um, you know, one thing about music uh, and anything, any new skill that you're learning is, we, we all have busy lives, but there are these moments where we get choices. Mm -hmm. I could continue on the Netflix series that I'm on, or I could come and practice the piano. And one is going to be more instantly gratifying, and one <laughs> is going to take more time. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's, uh, there's just choices, you know? And so, but that being said, if we don't get time to practice, I never, I never make anybody feel like ashamed or bad. We just kind of go with it. There was a really great movie, an independent movie, where a guy uh, had a wife who played piano all the time. She passed away, but she used to play music, her own compositions, and he tried to learn it. Huh. And eventually he said, I give up, because he went to for, take lessons, and he started playing conga drum. Uh, and he said, I can do that. this. Uh, so sometimes you have to go a different direction. If you right. want to do something, sometimes you have to go off a little bit, right? Right. Now, your lesson's over at the firehouse. It's starting this Sunday. At what time? 10 a.m. And is there a fee? Uh, it's $100 okay, for, for, all, for all four of them. For four lessons? Yep. That's cheap. It's inexpensive. Where can we go to get more information about that? Flowmusiclessons.com. Okay. That's so where it all up. is. Yeah. Do they have to bring their own ukulele? You do. Good question. You got to bring your own. If I wish I had one for you, but you got to bring your own. Okay. Yeah. Uh, website again. Flowmusiclessons.com. And you mentioned a YouTube channel. Bo Best Vina Music. Bo Best Vina Music. Okay, on YouTube. Uh, we'll have an Instagram soon, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting there. Yeah. Bo, thank you so much. Thank it's been you, a pleasure Leo. talking to you. I'm so glad you're doing this. You're inspiring people to find a path to happiness. I appreciate that very much, Leo. Thanks for having me.